Thank you for being here. I'm going to start just a little bit with um, just talking with you a little bit about autism. What do we usually hear about autism? One in 50, one in 66, challenges in social communication and repetitive interests and activities. This is the kind of information often shared in our communities about autism spectrum disorders. But there's so much more to the special population that's oftentimes not shared. So this is what we want to bring to you over the next couple of days. Welcome everybody, I'm Naomi Sweezy, I'm the director of the Hands in Autism Center, um, and we are bringing to you the second annual Autism Expo, uh, and it's entitled Hidden Talent, Celebrating Abilities Through Exposition. As the name implies, we're here to celebrate while we educate about autism spectrum disorder, but in a different way, sharing just a portion of the very unique talents and abilities that are often not really highlighted effectively. Do these special people have challenges? Absolutely. However, many also bring a very unique focus, commitment, and perspective that enables them to produce incredible art and communicate through this art in ways that oftentimes they can't do effectively, but just by speaking or in their words. Tonight, we want to celebrate all of our artists and provide all of you an opportunity to learn things you never knew about autism by sharing in their art and connecting directly with the artists themselves. We welcome you to take a look at your leisure, enjoy the puppetry that we'll be having behind us in a few moments by Kids on the Block, visit our hands table for resources and information, and let anyone in the bright teal shirts, you can't miss them, um, know how we can help you have a, more better, have a better stay. Before we do this, um, and before you, you have an opportunity to look at the different art and talk with the artists and enjoy the puppet show, have a snack, do some art yourselves, there's an art table here, um, I want you to get to know a couple of people who have really made this uh, a possible event. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of different names and just highlight them for you and um, some of how they relate to our center, uh, rather than coming back and forth in between each of them talking to you, but I want you to know who's coming up before you. First of all, we will have Paige Sharp, who is the Director of Programs at the Indiana Arts Commission. And in 2013, Hans was provided with two years of funding through grant application uh, to take our ideas and really build a foundation for what was to become this event. Our hope was to establish an event that would foster public awareness and education surrounding autism, but also contribution to the arts. Without the help of IAC, uh, we would not have been able to initiate or set this foundation for the years to come. The second person who will be talking with you is Dr. Paul Howe, our interim president and chief medical officer of Riley Hospital for Children. Dr. Howd has a long list of achievements as a board-certified pediatric oncologist and director of the Riley Stem Cell Transplant Program. However, how we've known him uh, for the last couple of years is really as a leader in strategic direction and leadership for Riley Hospital and the whole IU Health System. And as an advocate for children, for disabilities, and specifically for our program. With all the demands on his time, we're honored that he's spending just even a few moments with us tonight. Look for his tweets, he tends to do that during the event. And then thirdly, we'll also have Matthias Niedenberger. He is one of our special artists, and Matthias has partnered with Hands in Autism since its very beginning, and he's been involved in teacher trainings, community efforts, and in spreading education and information about autism all over the community and sharing his personal story. Matthias is a delightful young man that I've had the great pleasure and honor of seeing grow up from four years old to current day. Um, and he's currently one of our hands made support employment employees and also has become our resident hands spokesperson. So to start us off, please uh, welcome Paige. <laughs> Short person. Okay, so first and foremost, thank you. Thank you to all for being here, and most especially you artists. Thank you for sharing your world and your creativity with us, and well done. Um, your work is inspiring and it's fun, which is something uh, really important and something that we need every day. And thank you to Dr. Naomi Sweezy 
for building this program and reaching out to us, my colleague Ann Fields, and I are proud to share in your celebration. Hands and Autism received one of our competitive grants, uh, specifically our capacity building grant to support this exposition and these educational activities. This project, this show, shares an important value of our organization, equal access to the arts for everyone. As a publicly funded state agency, it is important to us that public funds directly serve the public. And here today we see an exemplar model of just that. No one should be excluded from the arts, especially those whose world can be revealed through a visual language we all share. Hidden talents, celebrating abilities through exposition, develops stronger communities through arts partnerships and advances real arts in education. And uh, what you see today is a stellar example of what happens when arts are leveraged to meet a community need. It bridges barriers, develops and deepens networks, provides access, educates, skill builds, and enhances understanding, all in a way that instills pride and meaning. This is why public funds for the arts are important. So thank you everyone, and thank you to Hands and Autism and Indiana University School of Medicine for your drive and your commitment to those you serve. Thank you. Good evening, as uh, Naomi said, I'm Dr. Paul Howd. I'm a pediatric oncologist and I am serving as the president of Riley Hospital for Children. I'm also the chief medical officer. Uh, as many of you may know, our mission is to serve all the children across the state of Indiana and beyond. And every day in our hospital, we have children who, and their families who travel from all 92 counties. Um, today, in fact, we had over 900 people who were seen in our outpatient clinic um, we have about 250 people who are staying inpatient overnight tonight, and over 50 who are having surgery at the hospital today. So overall, we'll touch about 350,000 visits with children every year. A huge part of what we do is not only helping with the care directly for sick children, but really thinking about health and prevention and wellness, and then all of the resources in the community that we need to help provide a fulfilled life for every child. And as Naomi mentioned, we have a lot of passion around children who have special needs. I'm honored to be asked for the second year to come and, and be a part of this event. Um, I'm very excited that this year there's also an opportunity to bid on the art, and I didn't hear Naomi say that, but if you look around, many of the art pieces have bid sheets in front of them, so feel free to pick your favorite piece and uh, see if you can take that home with you, and we know that the funds will go to, to good use. Um, I also have a passion for the... Uh, the Kids on the Block. The Joseph Maley Foundation is a foundation that was founded by uh, the, the family of a child I took care of and I serve on their board and I think it's a great um, partnership to have them here with us this evening. Um, the, the last thing I need to tell you is that I've talked too long because as Matthias and I would agree I'm an old guy in a suit and there's probably someone else who could really kick this off even better than I, and that would be Matthias. So, Matthias, you want to come up and tell us why this is really important to you and, and, and what a difference this has made. Well, he's right, and I am really pulling this off, aren't I? Hello, my name is Matthias Nienberger. I am 15 and I am and I'm glad to be here. I have been with Hanson Autism for as long as I can remember and I've been interning for them for over a year. It would possibly be a lot better if they added a paycheck to them. <laughs> Having autism has caused uh, some problems that Tans has helped me with. Like for instance, I have had a, a, a few um, uh, sensory problems and sometimes can be a little susceptible to stress. And 
I sometimes also have trouble reading people to tell when they're, you know, uh, to tell when they're either just a little angry, a little, a little tired of listening to me, which all of you have no choice now. I also sometimes have trouble paying attention to what I'm saying or what other people are saying. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, what I was saying... Sorry, I read the wrong part of my card, sorry. In my therapy, I was given the proper tools to help me get through all, my, all these problems, like talking to people and and I'm just how to how to tell when they want me to stop uh, talking. Which again, well, you all must listen. I've also shown that I've also been shown that. I uh, think if I if I learn to be patient, that a lot of people might be able to get, to take my opinion and even be, be patient in return, and that is um, uh, very helpful. Yeah. Autism also has a few advantages, like I mentioned. I can be patient. I can also be very creative. And that's why I like where I like things like Legos or Minecraft stuff where you can actually build things. Because because I can actually look at them and figure out how um, uh, how I can use them to build what I want. I kind of see the project in my head as if it were finished, you know. And then I, then I build what I see out of the parts I have. And I have heard that some people think that people with autism are closed off. That some, uh, that, um, uh, we're, that we just have n nothing in common with people that, that some, uh, we're just a pain to talk to or listen to. I can pretty much um, uh, talk to people just as well as anyone else, or, or sympathize with people, I'll, I'll give my opinion, and everything like that. And, okay, I lost my place. People with autism are good people like anyone else, and we do deserve deserve to be noticed as that, just people. And I and I also think I'm a, that Hans has helped me a lot with um, uh, all my problems. Like, like I just mentioned. And and now I can talk to people a lot better. I can, I can actually have conversations, not just drive people nuts. And many of my successes are because of the efforts of hands, of all the effort they give, they give to to make sure I do well and do well. And. I also have to thank my friends and family for also helping, for putting the effort into it. And I just want to say, if you know someone, then, or, or you have a child with autism, take them, bring them to Hands on Autism. You'll be glad you did, trust me. It's, they have helped me a lot. Thank you, that is all.
Well, as everybody has reiterated, thank you um, for being here, everybody, and thank you especially to the artists for contributing your work so that we could all share with you and enjoy with you. Um, before we break, and um, with break means stay there um, because there's going to be a show coming up in front of you. Um, but also, again, if you need to get up, want to get up, want to mosey around, it's conducive down here. It's just us basically, so feel free to look at the art and wander around and pace back and forth or do whatever you need to do. It's totally fine. Um, but I want to recognize um, that this is really, it, you know, we come tonight, and I'm included in this, to be honest, um, come tonight and just see all the beautiful art, and there is so much that happens behind the scenes in getting all of this together. Um, so the people in the teal shirts um, are, they're gabbing like nothing, <laughs> nothing's going on, but I want you to recognize everybody who is here tonight, um, from our staff and from our volunteers, um, so the staff members who have made this possible, our assistant director, Tiffany Neal, uh, Ann Fletcher, Roby Bentley, um, Josh Normington, who's out behind the camera, uh, and then we have all of our beautiful volunteers who are students and, uh, again, part of the Hands Employment uh, Center that we're, we've developed. Um, all of them have put in just hours and hours and hours of communications and coordination and all of that to put this on for you. So I want to give them a round of applause as well. Um, so I am so glad that Dr. Hout was able to give an introduction to the um, Joseph Malley uh, Foundation and the Kids on the Block for me um, because he did a much more adequate job than I would do. Um, but I'm just pleased to have them with us tonight and to be putting on some of their special presentations. Again, feel free to stay put or wander around while you're listening, whatever is good for you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm Mary Claire and we're from Christ the King Catholic School. And we're here with the Joseph Maley Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization serving children of all abilities. We have a skit for you today called New Friends. And the puppets have been working really hard, so could you please um, keep all your questions till the end and be respectful throughout the play. Thank you. And enjoy the show. Hi. My name is Mark Ryder, and you can probably tell just by looking at me that I'm Irish on account of red hair and the name of Ryder. Anyway, I'm out here because she's in there. My mom, I mean, she gets real nervous when I pop wheelies. But here it goes. I gotta get psyched up for this. One, <clears throat> two, <clears throat> and then the mom we've all been waiting for. Three. And again. Hey, look out. Oh, sorry. Are you new around here? No, I'm not new. I'm brand new. We just moved in last week. What's your name? Ma. Could you say that again? Ma. M-A-R-K. Ma the Great. Hi, Mark. I'm Melody. Hi, Melody. But don't ever call me Melody. Just call me Mel. But Melody's such a pretty name. How'd you get it? Well, I have these four older brothers. Yuck. And they tease me. And they tickle me. Guess what they're doing now? What? They're calling me Melvin. And I'm a girl. Double yuck. Huh? You don't look like a Melvin to me. Well, anyway. When my mom was in the hospital having me, my dad said, this one's a girl. And my mom said, that's music to my ears. So guess what? Oh, um, you don't have to tell me. Melody, a song, music to your mom's ears. Hey Mel, is something the matter with my chair? Mark, are you sick or something? Oh, no, I'm not sick. I have cerebral palsy. You got what? Sir, sir, I've got CP. Oh, CP. 
What's CP? Well, CP is something I was born with. And for me, having CP means some of my muscles are stiff. The muscles in my legs are stiff, so I don't walk. And the muscles in my throat and my mouth are stiff. That's why I talk different. You mean you don't ever, 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 ever walk? No, 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 no. But I get around real good in this thing. Oh, your wheelchair, right? Wrong. Wrong? This souped up super sport, faster than a jet plane cruiser. I get 30 miles per hour downhill in this baby. But Mark, if you're in the wheelchair all the time, oops, I meant cruiser. Get it right, Mel. I bet you can't do some of the other stuff that kids can do. Wait, Mel, I can do about 100 million different things. How about I show you something I can do, and you try and guess what it is. Okay. And if you know what it is, just yell it out. Here goes. You can swim? I sure can. All the way across the Olympic sized swimming pool. But that one's too easy. Here goes another one. You can ride a horse? No. Yep, I learned last summer at summer camp. <laughs> but Mark, how do you do other stuff? Other stuff? Oh, I bet you I know how I go back and forth from school. Well... No, Mark. How do you do other, other stuff? Oh, other, other stuff. I bet you I know how I go up and down the stairs. Well, I... No, Mark. Can I ask you something sort of personal? Oh, personal stuff. Sure, Mel. Ask me anything you want. Well, I... Uh... Uh, Any month now, she's going to ask me. Mark, how do you... I can't, I can't. Any month now, she's going to ask me. Mark, how do you... I just can't. Sure you can, Mel. Ask me anything you want. My ear is right here. Mark, how do you... How do I get into the bathroom? Mel, that was a very personal question. I know. Mel, haven't you ever noticed how public restrooms are accessible to people who use cruisers? They got wide doors and handrails. Oh yeah, I've seen those. <coughs> well, I've got a bathroom just like that, right in my own home. It's got a wide enough door so I can cruise right on in. And it's got a sink down low so I can wash my hands and my face. And it's got two handrails right next to the toilet. Wow, thanks for telling me, Mark. I was really wondering. Well, if you are wondering, maybe they're wondering too. If you guys have any questions about my wheelchair, oops, I mean my cruiser, or me having CP, then just raise your hand. Oh, this helmet? I have this helmet to protect my big brains just in case I fall out of my cruiser. Oh, well, not really, because my muscles and my legs are stiff, so I have to depend on my cruiser. Westfield, and we did our Kids on the Block puppet um, 
shows for about, there are about 500 kids in the school. So it was very exciting. And um, these kids are from Christ the King, and they've learned some other skits too. So would you like to see another skit? We have one called Peanut Butter Cookies, and um, I'm going to get my little puppeteers ready. It's um, a skit about hearing impairments. So it's pretty fun and interactive. So, Carol, we 
have a little bit of a problem. And we have eggs, because that's what the cookies are made of. We have milk to drink with the cookies. And we have peanut butter, because that's the kind of cookies they are. But there are no cookies in that bag. The cookies are in the oven now. Mmm, they smell delicious. Thank you. And while we're waiting, maybe some of the people in the audience have questions about what it's like for me to be deaf. If you do, raise your hand. Do you have a question? No? Does anyone have a question for Mandy? Yes? How does he learn in school? How do you learn at school, Mandy? My teachers teach me using sign language. And I can read their lips. Yes? Were you born deaf, Mandy? No, I got sick when I was two. That's why I can speak some words and read lips. At all? Let me go check on the cookies. Okay. Here are the cookies. They look delicious. Try one. Try one, you bet. Wait, they're hot. Hot and chewy, just the way I like them. Oh. They taste delicious. I can do something that you can't do. You can do something that we can't do? Watch. No. <laughs> Mandy, we can all eat a cookie. You can talk? With your mouth full, Mandy, we have to get to that party. Okay, bye. Bye. Um, so thank you for seeing our show. Maybe in a little while we'll have another show for you. Um, so enjoy the expo. It looks like there's wonderful art. Thank you.